So, Star Trek Discovery, MAGA, meaning Trump supporters, and Critical Race Theory. What's the connection? That's what we're going to talk about in this video. So, back when Star Trek Discovery first came out, it was pretty obvious that the majority of the people who were making it were really motivated by woke, left-leaning politics. And they just openly admitted that apparently their version of the Klingons are secretly Trumpsters. As in, their version of the Klingons were meant to represent white nationalists, in their view of what white nationalism is. The co-executive producer of the new series Star Trek Discovery has told Rolling Stone that President Donald Trump's 2016 presidential campaign was, quote, front and center in our minds as they developed it, so much so that the rallying cry of the show's villains is specifically patterned after the Trumpster credo, Make America Great Again. We felt like it would be interesting to really look at what's going on in the United States, Aaron Harberts told Rolling Stone, noting that the series' primary villains, an extremist Klingon sect, scream, Remain Klingon, something deliberately reminiscent of Make America Great Again. As Harberts put it, it's a call to isolationism, it's about racial purity, and it's about wanting to take care of yourself. And if anybody is reaching a handout to help you, it's about smacking it away. That was pretty provocative for us, and it wasn't necessarily something that we wanted to completely lean into, but it was happening. We were hearing the stories. Discovery star Jason Isaacs added, We're living in monstrous times. Let's not dance around it. Hideous, divisive times. When all sorts of stuff we thought was long buried is coming to the surface, and being encouraged by the most powerful people on the planet, we're living in disgusting times. He continued, I don't think science fiction can solve any of these things, but we are holding up an optimistic view of what the world could be, a better vision of ourselves. So let's take a look at what specifically the Klingons in question were saying. So to give you guys a little backdrop, if you don't know anything about Star Trek or Discovery in particular, the show opens up with a speech being made by a essentially a spiritual leader of the Klingons. Um, and one of the things that he begins it with is saying, together under one creed, remain Klingon. Now, what the concern of this spiritual leader was, was that he was concerned the Federation, which is the, are basically the main protagonist of any Star Trek story, which is a group of, it's just a melting pot of different races from different worlds coming together, you know, to live under one banner, kind of like the United States. Um, they were concerned that the Federation was seeking to destroy their culture through assimilation and integration. If the Klingon Empire were to join the Federation, then their concern would be essentially that their racial and cultural identity would be eliminated. In another scene, he explains it to an assembly of uh, all of the Klingon leadership. Our purity is a threat to them. They wish to drag us into the muck where humans, Vulcans, Tellarites, and filthy Andorians mix. In other words, his problem with it is that he doesn't want to be part of a society that's a melting pot. He wants his race to stay distinctly Klingon. And I guess the comparison they think they're drawing is to suggest that somehow MAGA was about white nationalism and making America white again, which was a term I heard frequently being said by leftists, but I've never actually heard it said by any Trump supporters that I know. And again, just a reminder, I did not vote for Donald Trump. When I read this article, something occurred to me, which was that I actually have never seen any parallels between the idea of wanting to stay distinct and not assimilate into a culture as being part of anything to do with MAGA or Trumpsters or whatever. However, I have stumbled on that kind of thought process when I've been reading different documents that were the foundation of critical race theory. Critical race theory literally teaches that the idea of assimilation and integration, which were favored by people like Martin Luther King, would have led to cultural genocide of black people. First of all, I'd like to make a recommendation that if you have not already, you should watch A Guide to Critical Race Theory by Ryan Chapman. He does a fantastic job, and his work is extremely well-sourced, 
And all of the quotes that he does for, you know, basically various books on critical race theory, he literally shows you where he got the quotes from, which I'm going to do a little bit of here in a moment. So since frequently I am told by people who are supportive of critical race theory that obviously I don't understand it, um, or specifically that I've been given misinformation from Fox News, I'm going to do exactly what Ryan Chapman did, and I'm going to pull directly from their documents. Now, before I begin reading this, I need to explain what race consciousness is. This is basically literally the doctrine that we need to be hyper aware of race at all times in all things in society. And that the idea that colorblindness, of, meaning just to not take race into account, is itself racist. So here that is, you know, directly from their documents. Let's read it. With its explicit embrace of race consciousness, critical race theory aims to re-examine the terms by which race and racism have been negotiated in American consciousness and to recover and revitalize the radical tradition of race consciousness among African Americans and other peoples of color. In other words, we need to make black people hyper aware of their blackness again, which is very similar in my opinion to remain Klingon. Anyway, a tradition that was discarded when integration, assimilation, and the ideal of colorblindness became the official norms of racial enlightenment. Now again, going back to Star Trek and the Federation, um, while assimilation is normally associated with the Borg, if your planet and culture wants to join the Federation, then you assimilate into the culture of the Federation, though you are still able to hold on to your own cultural ideals, and you have certain rights to that end. But at the end of the day, you're basically embracing the Federation's culture. That is essentially an American value. And one of the things that I frequently see when reading critical race theory documents is that they associate that instead not as American culture, but as white culture. It's whiteness. American values are white values, according to critical race theory. And in this quote from another document, Critical Race Theory and Introduction, as I have underlined here, it also considers cultural nationalism and the opposite notion that minorities should attempt to assimilate and blend into mainstream society. In other words, critical race theory does not support the idea that people of you know, the minority culture should assimilate into American society, which they label white society. So they oppose that idea. Why does that sound like remain Klingon? Now, this is an excerpt from Race Consciousness, which is a book specifically dedicated to that aspect of critical race theory. Um, I'm not going to read this entire thing, but if you look down here at the bottom, you will notice that they point out that um, they believe that the ideas of integration and assimilation, meaning the notion that we were going to become a colorblind society and treat everybody equally, was actually a secret ploy on the part of white supremacists to dominate black people. So by trying to make them equal to us, we were trying to dominate them. Here's another excerpt from that critical race theory document, Race Consciousness. I'm not going to read the entire thing. You can pause it if you want to. But here I have underlined in red, thus, when black nationalists, Klingons, declared that integration was a subterfuge for white supremacy, as in Federation supremacy, and even represented a form of painless genocide. So again, they believe it's genocide, that this is cultural genocide that we're trying to force them to become white. Now, the Star Trek Federation and American society have this in common, that while they are unified and do have a common culture, that is the Federation culture, as I mentioned earlier, each individual member of the Federation still maintains their own cultural heritage, and nobody's trying to take that from them, just as there are no laws that are being passed to make it illegal for people of African-American descent to honor their own cultures and superstitions and, you know, languages. I mean, there is no effort to try to stamp this out, which is one of the reasons why suggesting that integration into American society was an attempt at cultural genocide is just asinine. Now, one of the other things that critical race theory makes a habit of doing is venerating the early work of Malcolm X when he was a segregationist, racist, black nationalist. And it's interesting because 
When you look pretty closely at that time of Malcolm X's life, when he was working for Elijah Muhammad, who was the progenitor of the Nation of Islam, which is just basically a black supremacist group, at one point, Elijah Muhammad uh, asked Malcolm X to meet with, of all people, the Ku Klux Klan. Why? Because they had an awful lot in common with them. The meeting was the beginning of an uneasy alliance between the Nation of Islam and the Ku Klux Klan on shared goals of racial segregation and separation. It was also the beginning of Malcolm's disillusionment with the black Muslim organizations and his embrace of a more mainstream civil rights movement. In other words, this event was one of the things that led to Malcolm X realizing that segregation uh, and more specifically black nationalism and black supremacy was stupid and not the philosophy that he wanted to follow. A fact that the current Civil rights activists tend to gloss over in addition to trying to reinvent Mar uh, Martin Luther King as somehow being supportive of riots. Let's continue. At the time of the meeting, race relations in America had been rocked by the 1954 Brown v. Board of Education ruling, which had outlawed school segregation. This, I might add, according to Derek Bell, one of the main writers of critical race theory, was supposedly, again, an attempt at white supremacy. Like they literally believed that desegregating schools was an attempt to destroy, you know, black culture to um, further white supremacy. Elijah Muhammad appeared to have other ideas entirely. He struck a note nowhere near as assertive toward the Klan as Malcolm had hoped. Dispassionate as usual when asserting Nation of Islam doctrine, Muhammad stated that his battle was not against whites, but for the lost hearts and minds of black people. Both the Klan and the Nation of Islam, Muhammad summarized, opposed integration and race mixing. Each group was on record as opposing the goals of the Re um, Reverend Martin Luther King Jr., although for separate and unequal reasons. The Muslims viewed King as a chief rival. The Klan saw him as a dangerous threat to white hegemony. Moreover, Muhammad allowed for no hierarchy among Caucasians on the issue of white supremacy. From the sitting U.S. president to the imperial wizard, all were slammed as white devils. Does that sound familiar? Remember, all white people are the same and collectively guilty for everything that has ever happened, you know, or ever perpetrated by anyone who happened to be white. What Elijah Muhammad was reaching out to the Ku Klux Klan about was essentially to get their support for reparations in the form of basically being allowed to form an ethno state for black people. Um, that was what he thought was the best solution. And he felt that since the Ku Klux Klan also wanted black people out of the United States, that they had that in common so they could work together. Think very carefully about that. When you consider that now critical race theory wants us to embrace this kind of thinking as the real civil rights movement, um, you know, to be against race mixing, which I've already seen. I'm sure you guys might remember um, the judge of character show where the lady basically went after childish Gambino for marrying a white woman and not telling anyone, um, you know, that be essentially when you study the nation of Islam doctrine pretty closely, it's really obvious that they're black supremacists and the racial activism just starts to take on more and more of a black supremacist tone all the time. And if they're pushing towards uh, Malcolm X as being one of the role models that they should have, you know, again, they're referring to this time period of Malcolm's life when he believed that um, it shouldn't, you know, that segregation was the right answer and that anything less was black genocide. So consider again that these people, when seeking allies to meet out their goals, happened to find that they had an awful lot in common with the Ku Klux Klan. So once again, looking at this critically, I've never seen any evidence that MAGA was exclusionary to people of other races. Um, you know, like the Blacks for Trump group is an excellent example of that. You know, uh, when you watch January 6 videos, you can see that the Blacks for Trump were treated well by the other Trumpers that were there that were supposed to all be white supremacists. Um, I did a video on that debunking everything's going to be all white take on January 6th, where they whitewash the whole event. They'd like to whitewash the entire Trump movement. But again, Klingons are not Trumpers. Klingons are black nationalists. How do I come to that conclusion? Well, as I already proved, they're all about remain black, and Klingons are about remain Klingon. 
Thanks for listening. Thanks again for tuning in, everybody. Like and subscribe and ring the bell. Um, I am looking for more supporters on Patreon and PayPal. I've got a number of them, but it's still nowhere near enough to actually be able to support myself with this channel. So if you'd like to continue to see this content and with more frequency, please consider supporting what I do financially. It's certainly never going to come through YouTube monetization. Check out my website, v-radio.us, where you can check out my other social media, where you can contact me and interact with me directly. And I actually do interact with my fans directly, not like people who just set up a Discord channel and are never in there. Um, In addition to that, you can also find all of my other mediums just in case something is uh, censored by YouTube or that I myself get censored by YouTube. You can find me on Odyssey, Rumble, uh, and BitChute. So looks like Odyssey is going to be adding live streaming pretty soon, which will make it an even better place to end up in the event that YouTube finally does get rid of me. So thanks again, folks, for tuning in to V-Radio.